trail mix. Let's welcome tonight's guest. When he says you look like a million bucks, it's an insult. 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. If he has to hear one more divorced dad joke, he's going to complain to his kids every other weekend. Actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lissau. If you ask his family, he's actually not coming to work enough. Host of One Nation and the Brian Kilmeade Radio Show, Brian Kilmeade. And she's like a picket fence. White, has good points, but don't sit on her. Fox's contributor, Cat Tiff. down you crazy people <laughs> Vivek welcome back to the show so what do you got to what do you have to say to like the parents out there where do you stand on all this I'd say keep standing up if you're a mom if you're a parent it's your kids not the kids who belong to the school it's actually pretty simple yeah. this, they used to say that math is racist that was a popular thing in the woke movement in schools yeah. you know math isn't racist but you know what might be is not teaching black kids how to do math which mm-hmm. was a which a big problem in the country right but you know, if this is a mind virus, I think the lab leak for this virus actually was the federal government. It was the Department of Education. And not a lot of people know this, Greg, but they use the money they give to schools. It's not just the school boards that are bad. The money they use is like a handcuff that forces these schools to adopt these woke ideologies. And that's why I've kept it pretty simple. If I'm president, I'm running for president. I say I'm going to shut down the Department of Education because mm-hmm. it doesn't actually need to exist. And I think so a lot of these woke cancers start in the bad places you'd expect, actually, in the federal government. So there's actually things we can do about it. That'd be amazing. Shut down the Department of Education. <laughs> Replace it with like a hot pretzel truck. <laughs> that way they say, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Check this out. It's like a hot pretzel truck. Uh, Jamie, in your life, that would be amazing for you because then, you know, you probably don't eat well. Some... That's true. <laughs> By the way, how annoying all the woke video. I just got more and more annoyed as those clips were being played. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I will never say birthing people. Mm-hmm. I will. You know what I mean? Yeah. I will continue to say people that won't sleep with me. (laughs) (laughs) But for real, I got kids at Kitchen. Why don't you just say Earth? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I should have. That umbrella could have been wider. (laughs) You're right. But you should be able to choose where your kids go to school. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Like we we had to change my kids school. They were we had (laughs) teachers. They were getting bullied and we were homeschooling them. <laughs> That's amazing. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting tired of like schools in general. I, I do homework with my kids. My kids in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. They, I feel like more work can be done at this. I feel like all they do at school is just give my kid work for me to do when he comes home. For real, it's it's. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely exhausting. All I found out doing math was that I wouldn't graduate eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> It's getting harder. Because it's like, there's like X's and Y's. I don't know any. Oh, the only math I know for sure is one X can equal losing 50% of your. (laughs) (laughs) Brian, at least he's not bitter. I know. He doesn't seem angry. First, you, we, now, do you remember your family? I, I, do. I, I, I have photos there, and there, sketches. There are like, is there some, is there outside of this building, so you, which you never leave? Right. You have pictures on your desk. So you ask them questions. Yes. You, you attack me. Yes. And by the way, the only thing I am very scared of your audience. Yes. They are they're pumped up and happy, but almost too happy. I can't decide if it's UFC or WWE. Yeah. If I had to make a choice. Oh, yeah. one, uh, one it's little... a problem for hosts at Fox and Friends when they come on here. They're not used to being liked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There are women taking off their tops right now. Right? <laughs> That's because it's so hot in here. I do, it too. I think what, what's happened, uh, the only thing good thing out of the pandemic was now the parents can know they cannot lay back anymore. I mean, between the curriculum that they're learning, between uh, the things that kids are coming home with. We used to be worried that a kid will come home in eighth grade and think, well, uh, global warming is real and it's overrated. And they panic. Now we find out about gender. They're picking their gender. Uh, they're deciding when, whether or not they're going to study. They're deciding, uh, they're deciding that they know more than their parents. And I just think the worst thing they've done 
is they've gotten women uh, moms involved, and they're not saying the Democratic Republicans. They're just saying they're angry and they want it fixed. So that helps the Glenn Youngkins of the world. It helps the Ron DeSantis of the world. It helps the Vivek Ramaswamy's of the world. Who, when, they, when, they, when they talk about when they talk about school. Everybody's all ears. They're not going to say, I want the Democratic women or the Republican mm. women. I like my answer as good as Jamie's and almost yeah. as good as Vivek's. No, it does remind, it reminds me. I remember when uh, little, uh, little Janet came home from school. Uh, she was a uh, junior in high school, and she was talking about how the teacher was telling her about pronouns. And she said she wanted to be a they. So I dumped her. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what happens when Brian talks. <laughs> I just think of things to say. Right. And it was worth it. Right. Uh, <laughs> I just thought of saying that. I didn't even do the math, Kat. Yeah. How are you? Well, I just love this panel of moms you've assembled. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of dudes and me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just don't see how it's controversial to be like, you know what? Maybe you should have some say where your kid goes to school. Uh, anybody who kind of wants to fight against that idea is implicitly saying that they know for a fact that it's a problem because some schools are very bad. Mm-hmm. And the only reason they're allowed to be so bad is because kids are forced to go to those schools anyway. Uh, I don't think the government should have this much say. I think that it's ridiculous. I think that families, parents, they know what's best for their kids. And I don't see how that's possible. All right. That was a great block. And we got more blocks to come up next. Djokovic can't play a match. And Fauci whips up a study from scratch. Welcome back to this fine show. They crack down on the best player in tennis, but isn't Fauci the real menace? (laughs) Novak Djokovic has withdrawn from a major tournament after being denied entry into the U.S. because he's not vaccinated against COVID. He requested a vaccine waiver, but was rejected by the DHS. The tennis player who's from Serbia, which is a country, is currently... (laughs) Currently ranked number one in the world and number two in my dreams after Mike Lindell. (laughs) And as a world-class athlete who has antibodies, his chance of getting ill from COVID is the same as me taking Taylor Swift back. (laughs) Not happening. And as a young pro athlete with antibodies, his chances of sickness are the same as Kill Me's Amazon reviews. (laughs) Almost zero. That was totally unnecessary. Shut up! <laughs> the event includes matches in Miami, so Florida Senators Rick Scott and Marco Rubio wrote a letter to the president reminding him that he himself said the pandemic was over. Although it's not like Biden to forget things, like how to walk upstairs. <laughs> Meanwhile, House Republicans on a committee probe in the pandemic say they've uncovered new emails that show Fauci worked to discredit claims that COVID leaked from a Wuhan lab. Said in February 2020, Fauci prompted researchers to write a scientific paper to disprove the lab leak theory. Then weeks later at the White House, cited that same paper as evidence that the theory was bogus while acting like he didn't know its authors. There was a study uh, recently that we can make available to you where a, a group of highly qualified evolutionary virologists looked at the sequences in uh, bats as they evolve and the mutations that it took to get to the point where it is now is totally consistent with a jump of a species from an animal to a human. I I don't have the authors right now, but we can make that available too. Nice try. Even the bat said, what a load of guano. (laughs) You know what this is like? You know what Fauci did? It's like a restaurant writing its own Yelp reviews to deny that they poisoned the customers when they did. But bad things happen when you let an unaccountable, unethical blowhard spend decades in government. You end up with global pandemics that kill millions and worse, forcing us to do a story about tennis.
<laughs> I finally found a sport worse than soccer, Brian. It's not true. Come on. It, uh, there are two great sports. They have an international quotient to them that you're not familiar with. First off, I didn't know this was the inter- <laughs> I didn't know this was the international sign for bat virus. So he goes, it's the bat to the bat to the bat to the bat. Everybody knows. So this is like you, co- you commissioning Cat or Tyrus to write a view of. Who is the best late night talk show host? And being surprised yes. that they name you. And this to me is so it's so aggravating. Also, when it comes to tennis, there's nothing safer than playing tennis against somebody vaccinated or unvaccinated. There's nobody you around are, you. There's no one around you. You're breathing fresh air to the outside. Who rejected this man? He's got two more years at the top of his game. They're denying two tournaments, sold out crowds. This is just a I, I'm embarrassed that this is the government that denies this Serbian a country. Mm-hmm. Serbia is a country, a chance to to see their national play here. Is that well, what you're embarrassed by? I, I'm I'll, just interested in what you get embarrassed by. Well, <laughs> how come you don't listen to what I say? I listen. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. I, I listen to what I what you said, and the answer to who stopped him from coming in was the Department of Homeland Security. Mm. So thank God for them to keep us safe (laughs) from Serbian unvaccinated tennis players. I, you know, I would say that I was shocked that this department that was created 20 years ago to keep us safe from terrorism has now evolved into doing something completely different and useless rather than just being gotten rid of. But that's not shocking at all. No, it's not. (laughs) Should the DHS storm the NFL games to prevent people from spinal cord injuries or from being paralyzed. Don't give them any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the irony is our favorite sport is watching people maim each other. Right. And we're like, and we, we got a but we got a administration, Jamie, that's saying no, we must protect the what, what are they protecting the ball boys? The ball <laughs> girls. <laughs> I don't. You know what's funny? I was actually I was a ball boy for a while, but it was for the. <laughs> I was. <laughs> what an audience! <laughs> I feel like I, live I, at the witch I really here. was. I really was. It was. But it was for the wrestling team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we had to make sure the uniforms were tight enough. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. It, this is embarrassing. It really is. Embar- this guy's a 22 time. Grand Slam champion. He should be playing. Back when I was drinking, I was the 22-time Grand Slam champion at Denny's. Um, this, this is the first time. By the way, um, tennis always reminds me of my marriage because love equals zero. <laughs> You're really leaning into this, aren't you? Is it, isn't it a weird part of this, though? This is. When have you ever heard before getting in trouble for doing a sport for not Doing a drug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, he's got a... T- it's like a backwards... It's a whole- I remember when I worked at Arby's, they would... They would um, Is there they- a punchline to that? Because you could stop that. Uh, I know. The setups are killing me. Um, but when I worked at Arby's, they would drug test us, test us. And if there was even a tiny bit of marijuana in your system, they would let you keep your job. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> Insanity, though. Let him play. Yeah, Vivek, last word. You're a big tennis fan. So I'm a big you, tennis fan. How do you feel about this? If you were president, would you issue an executive order and say, free the Serb? <laughs> I, would, uh, I would do what a chief executive does, is if an employee isn't doing their job, you fire him, start with Anthony Fauci or the likes of him. Yeah! Yeah, if, you, if you run the federal government, you, they work for you, you don't work for them. And so I'd get rid of these civil service protections so we don't have to deal with the likes of him ever again yes. over the course of this. <laughs> and the thing about Djokovic, you know, it makes me mad is, you know what, he played here in New York City in 2021. Wherever you are in the debate, COVID was worse then. You had vaccines for nine months. And yet now, after the pandemic is over, years after it's irrelevant, now it's a virtue signal. So it actually has nothing, has about as much to do with COVID as the Spanish Inquisition had to do with Christ, which mm-hmm. is to say nothing at all. It is a toxic religion. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Good for Novak Djokovic. He's at least standing his ground. You know what? He's losing grand slams, but he is the man for doing it. Yeah. What were you thinking about when he was talking? I was thinking about, I can't believe I'm doing a segment on tennis. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought you would think. Yeah, you know that. Well, tennis is good, man. Uh, you're you know, you're tennis nodding is, rapidly. Tennis is fun, you know, when you got nothing to do. Oh, come on. <laughs> Greg, Greg, I'm with you. I actually got, I got tennis elbow from changing the channel from tennis. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about tennis is smelling new balls. 
Uh, I was a ball boy, actually. You were a ball I boy? I was a ball boy, so. Gee, yeah, we didn't smell too many of them. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> they smell great. They do. Remember, you'd open up the thing. Fresh. Yeah, fresh. Oh. Yeah. It's like a drug. Right. It's like a drug. When's the last time you did Ah, uh, new work week. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Up next, can a biological male squat and bench by identifying as a wench? <laughs> Welcome back, America. The next time a bench press record falls, it could be because women have balls. <laughs> These guys. <laughs> Testicles are now a perk. And the women's clean and jerk. I speak of transgender powerlifters, as I always do. <laughs> yes, the USA Powerlifting Organization has been forced to allow them to compete in the women's division after losing a discrimination lawsuit. On the plus side, when they fill a cup for the urine test, they can do it from a distance. <laughs> JC. J.C. Cooper, a trans woman, filed a suit with the Minnesota Department of Human Rights in 2019, alleging the organization violated her rights by banning her from competing as a woman. And like Jesse Waters' old toupee, <laughs> one person was dumb enough to buy it. <laughs> USA Powerlifting must now decease and desist from all unfair discriminatory practices because of so sexual orientation and gender identity, which makes the whole idea of men's and women's divisions then pointless. Of course, studies have shown that men are often 30 percent stronger than female competitors of the same size and skill and 100 percent more likely to brag about it. <laughs> so things remain testy as. <laughs> oh, you boo that. Oh, OK. Suddenly you're the you're sitting around the Algonquin round table. <laughs> oh, that's beneath me. <laughs> so the group considers an appeal saying they're trying to balance the needs of cis and transgender women. They even suggested a third category for all lifters, but the court shot it down. Cooper twice competed against a lone woman in 2019, beating her both times after successfully opening every jar of pickles. <laughs> <laughs> but she did come in last place in another competition as well. Perhaps the weightlifting contest also had a cooking challenge. A sexist would say. Kat, as a uh, seasoned power lifter, uh, <laughs> how is this going to impact the sport? Yeah. You're going to be the one. This is the one reason I could ever be a successful power lifter. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I like South Park. Mm -hmm. I'm really big, really big fan. Yeah. I as I was watching it, it never occurred to me that it was also a documentary mm -hmm. <laughs> because. This was the exact plot of an episode from years ago, which, again, if you've seen South Park, you know it's supposed to be like this overblown satirical cartoon. Mm. But now it's not. And I think that using the word discrimination implies that there's there's no scientific or medical reason whatsoever to even consider that a person who's born a dude might be stronger than someone who's born a woman. And uh, that's not true because there, there are, there's real discrimination out there, obviously. And th th to call that this, there's like some real reasons to think this. Yeah, it's weird that we're that uh, people deciding to be whatever they want suddenly then becomes a legal issue, Jamie. And we have to abide by their choices. <laughs> Would you ever date a female power lifter? <laughs> that way, when you get thrown out of the house. Yeah, I wouldn't date a male or female <laughs> uh, power lifter. This is it, this is so. Unfair. I feel like they got. They should make a rule that like you're not allowed to compete in women's powerlifting. If when you win, they can hang the gold medal on your penis. Um, <laughs> I, I I actually did a little powerlifting back in my. I, I um I benched um I benched 405 pounds once. Really? Oh yeah. I think that's what she weighed. It was um. <laughs> I woke up in a cold sweat. Um, I don't know. Um, so, Greg, you know, you know, if I haven't had like the easiest life with a divorce and stuff. And yeah. um, I, I tried to record a few things to maybe help oh, some good. people uh, going through some of the same difficulties that I'm going through. Oh, do you have one or anything? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Lisso's <laughs> lessons, tips from a divorced dad. Listen, kids, if you're ever getting bullied by someone bigger and stronger than you, don't fight back. Tell the teacher, 
to search his locker to find the drugs he planted. In fact, do you have advice to beat that? Well, I mean, I just think, I, but first of all, well done. I really liked it. Uh, so do that. You are a politician. So, so I, I'm becoming one slowly. Yeah. I'm, getting, I'm getting to practice. It's just, it's just the thing about this trans thing that really bothers me, right, is this, this entire movement for years that said the sex of the person you're attracted to is hardwired on the day you're born because it had to be for gay rights to be civil rights, mm-hmm. now says that your own biological sex is completely fluid over your life. That doesn't make sense. You can't believe both of those things at the same time. And it's a religion or the same movement that said you need Title IX to protect women's sports. Now say that women's sports don't need to be protected. So it's, it's the contradictions that just bother me. We should call it out for what it is. And I don't think that's transphobic. I think that's just being a logical, thinking human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's... it's uh... Brian, uh, you're, you know, you're into sports. This is this is this might as well be soccer. This might as well be ESPN. We're doing so much sports here. I know. I know. know. By the way, just to create some tension on the set. I didn't like your piece, Jamie. All right. So that is all right. (laughs) No, I know it's fantastic. A couple of things. You have to make a decision. When you're 17, 18, you're Kobe Bryant. You make a decision. I'm going to go pro. You can't go back and go to college. So if you decide I'm going to be a woman and you're a man. That's your decision. Congratulations. You cannot compete against other women. That's not discrimination. That's fact. The whole gender fluid thing went a little over my head, but a lot does. It doesn't really matter. I just know nothing makes sense anymore. Nothing is real. There's no, there's no hardcore beliefs in anything. And I just think that powerlifting, for the, I have never talked about powerlifting ever in my life, yeah, I, uh, let alone on a late night show with Greg Gutfeld, who doesn't like sports. Can I it ask makes you no question? sense. Are you going to be doing, this seems like so Fox and Friends, did you hear about the illegal aliens who ate the bald eagle? That just seems like something you would do. I have not heard that at all. Oh, you're going to, it's going to be like, it's going to be like Christmas morning for you tomorrow, right. waking up to that red meat. Well, <laughs> I know whatever we do, the five just steals it anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, if you, miss, so nice. if you miss Fox and Friends, you can just watch it on the five and act like it's fresh. <laughs> do you, I will say this about powerlifting that I miss. Do you remember as a kid watching the Olympics? You used to do powerlifting, right? I mean, you I, I, mean I, I didn't do powerlifting. I did some lifting. <laughs> but... Uh, do you remember, the, like, in the Olympics, those giant men, yes. mm. and they would be, like, were famous for just lifting once, mm-hmm. and they were just, like, the unhealthiest. That's all they would do. That, I think they the they practiced. Un- yeah, they practiced <laughs> lifting things, but they were the most unhealthiest people you ever saw on Earth, and they were, like, at the beginning of... <laughs> and they were hairy. And they're super hairy. Yes. They're always Russian. Right. Russian big dudes, and they would, like, you would think they were, like, 70, but they were 20. Right, but you couldn't yeah. tell they were just so big. Pocket Hercules. Pocket Hercules. Yeah, I remember him. He was from Bulgaria. No. <laughs> uh, maybe in the catalogs they get delivered to your house. But this guy was a bull. But he's a Bulgarian lifter. Well done. All right, coming up, Vivek's got a fierce belief that he should be the next commander in chief. <laughs> Heckling. First, he went for broke in his war against the woke. But are we in for a political tsunami caused by President Ramaswamy? Slow down, people. Yeah, Yeah, Vivek's running for president, and now everybody wants to know why. He's rich, he's got a family and a full head of hair, probably probably his own. Why in God's name would he be doing this to himself? You know, I could see Jamie doing this. He's got nothing to lose. <laughs> so, why? Are you crazy? What are you thinking? I might be crazy, yeah. but, but, but the reality is, just take the stuff we've just been talking about. Yeah. Wokeism, transgenderism, mm-hmm. COVIDism. I throw climatism on the list, even though we didn't talk about that. <laughs> why is it that we get these crazy religions, cults in America, arising at the exact same time? Mm-hmm. And I think it's not a coincidence. I think it's because, and this is particularly for me, right? I think I'm the first millennial Republican to ever run. Mm -hmm. People in my generation are so hungry for meaning. Mm 
Mm-hmm. We're hungry for purpose and identity at a point when the things that used to fill that void, faith, patriotism, family, hard work, they've disappeared. Mm-hmm. And so I think we can actually address that if we answer the question of what does it mean to be American today? Answer that question. And I think we dilute this woke poison to irrelevance instead of, frankly, doing a lot of what I've been doing, which is just complaining about it. Let's actually solve the problem. And I think we can do it. No, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you do need like a you do need like a wealthy person because you're going to like you're going to run through a lot of money. And people are going to try to destroy you. You said you're the first millennial. I th- happen to. I think you might be. I don't think there's even been a Gen X president. Has there? They're all. They've all been baby yeah, boomers. I think I'm the first millennial to Republican to actually even run. But yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of age-based identity politics either. It's just that I think for the next generation of Americans, you ask most of them, "What does it mean to be an American?" You get a blank stare in response. Mm-hmm. I think it's a problem. I think it's a solvable problem. And, and look, I'm all in for. This America first agenda. I'm an America first conservative. I don't apologize for it. But we have to know what America is even before we put it first. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's I think that's what I'm on a mission to do. And I think we can actually take this all the way through the White House and beyond. Are you concerned about what nickname Trump might come up with? <laughs> I mean, I think I like the tsunami. That's tsunami, actually pretty good. But that's a compliment. Yeah, you know, that's, that's why I like it. He might uh, just call you Swami Vivek. Look at Swami. <laughs> right. You just say Swami. You know, as long as they uh, pe- people can't even pronounce my real name correctly. So I wish oh, I wish they could get my actual nickname, whatever it is, yeah. as long as they pronounce it right. I'm going to be really honest with you. It's a little trash talk on the basketball court, a little locker room talk. If yeah. you can't handle a little bit of name calling you probably shouldn't be representing the United States across the table from Xi Jinping. So just toughen up. I think these Republicans need to stop whining about it and get on with it. I just think that insulting people is very mean-spirited, and that's why. (laughs) (laughs) So you don't have any dark, scandalous secrets you might want to share now just to get get in front of it? Just dark dark skin i think it's like, it's like, and it's not a secret you know so uh, wow, so i don't think so good i don't, yeah. think so. <laughs> I don't think so where do you put yourself in this uh, in the uh, kind of the spectrum of politics from, from let's say the progressive left to uh, libertarianism uh, are you closer to being a libertarian you seem like you're closer to so being- i used to call myself a libertarian because that was a cool thing to do back in college yeah. i was like a libertarian rapper which is sort of uh, you were a libertarian yeah, rapper yeah, back in college it was it was a phase in life oh that's the dead that's that's the secret. That's the, that's the, <laughs> the dark secret. They're gonna We're going to find that I'm footage. Just, the oppo files. If you just use the N-word, you are so... <laughs> <laughs> So, so you know, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave that for, for the people to, to search for. So, so the, the, the reality is, is I'm not even in the, I'm not even on the spectrum, right? I'm not yep. a politician. I'm coming. I see, if I had to divide it up, I don't even think it's about Republicans and Democrats in this yeah. country. It is: Are you pro-American mm-hmm. or are you anti-American? And mm-hmm. there's people in both camps. But I think it's not 50-50. I think it is 80-20 or better in our favor, which means I think 2024. Mark my words. All right, hold me to hold my feet to the fire on this one will be a landslide election like 1980 or 1984. Mm-hmm. And I'm running because I think I'm the person who can actually deliver that. We don't want a national divorce. If you want a national revival, let's double down on pro-America. That's the actual party that I'm going to I think I got, I got time for one more question. Now, I always wonder, it's like, it's like Trump did the same thing. It's like they don't decide to run for something small. They go, eh, I don't want to be mayor of New York. <laughs> Uh, you could be the mayor of Cincinnati, which I believe is a city in Ohio. It right? is, but I live in Columbus, which oh, is you live totally in Columbus. different city oh, Columbus. You know, I get those two yeah. confused. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I mean, you know, why didn't you try to be mayor of Columbus? They need a mayor. Yeah, I think there, there might be people who are better at that job than me doing it. But mm-hmm. to be honest, I'm interested in the national revival. I don't want to be a politician. So if I was mapping out my political career. I see what you mean. You're yeah. right. I would I would have done this very differently. Step by step. I'm not into a political career. Yeah. I'm into national revival. Let's see if we can do it. All right. National revival. <laughs> All right. Well, up next. Oh, what a transition. She felt her ex's scorn because she wouldn't quit porn. <laughs> A story in five words. Story in five words. Porn star's ex had problems. (laughs) Jamie, I go to you first. Uh, 
Well, uh, I haven't even so, I haven't even told you the story yet, mm-hmm. <laughs> and nobody at home knows what I'm talking about. Okay. So why don't you just hold on, Jamie? Okay. Maybe this maybe this is why she left you. <laughs> uh. Maybe it is. <laughs> So porn star Riley Reed says an ex-boyfriend made her feel like a disgusting person because of her career choice, and he refused to kiss her after she'd been at work. (laughs) What do you make of this? Is it okay to go now, Greg? Yes. (laughs) Um, this This is crazy. So she's saying, like, he wouldn't kiss her when she came home from work, and she's saying that made her feel disgusting. I would have thought she would have a higher threshold for feeling disgusting. (laughs) Like, a, a lot of times when I'd come home from work to stand up, my wife wouldn't kiss me because she knew I ate <laughs> on stage. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's because she didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I, uh, I knew that you wanted to do this story on right. Fox and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ainsley said no. Right, yeah. Shot it down. Because, right. you know, you got to do the women in the Bible count. You know what I told her? Don't worry, Guffell will do it tonight. Yes. And I'll, I'll have my opportunity. <laughs> so uh, a couple of things come up. You know, this is what she wants to do. Yes. Right? So she now has a kid. Mm-hmm. She's got a, a happy husband. Mm-hmm. And she still has a thriving film career. Mm-hmm. So you can have it all. <laughs> <laughs> God. Man, after midnight, Brian, sure is different than Fox and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Right, look at him. His, tie, his tie's loosened. He's saying, hey, man, do whatever, right. do whatever <laughs> floats as your boat, Riley. I get. Call me. <laughs> I didn't say that at all. You said call me. You mouthed it. I did not. <laughs> Kat, what lessons do you glean, a great word, from Riley's story? Okay, so I think that sometimes the word porn star is overused, but but not in her case. Like, she's had... No, I'm serious. It's not even a joke. She's had a, a long, successful career in porn, which is really hard to do. And if you don't want to... It is! Jeez. They're laughing at the most obvious I pumps. know, I, but it's, it's not even a joke. Like, okay. Um, if, you don't, if you don't want to date a porn star then don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> go to the much larger dating pool of people who are not porn stars. <laughs> Rather than this guy who's like, don't date her and then make her feel like <laughs> every day for doing her job. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. You made some new friends. Yeah. <laughs> Vivek, what is your campaign stance on this story? <laughs> <laughs> well, say this i would say this uh in all seriousness yeah I, I did see you know my, my wife doesn't like it if i go for a workout and sweat she won't kiss me so i saw some of the videos in the green room and i'm with the ex-boyfriend on this one so uh, uh, all right don't go away we'll be right back